everyone welcome to my show what went right in today's show i am introducing you the most gracious personality with extraordinary and versatile achievements she is a scholar but spunky her lifestyle is the epitome of ethical management an educationist she joined as a faculty less than 21 years of age and continued to teach for next 44 years in the department of food and nutrition and retired as a vice principal from lady even college she has three books to her credit out of which she was the most important published by the prestigious publishing house orient blackswell she has undertaken numerous projects sponsored by international and national organizations like who unicef ncw ncaer and many other significant projects the most active project is the usage of basic food preparation which is being referred for making a nutrimeter under the portion of the on project that is being sponsored by bill gates in association with harvard school of education under the aegis of ministry of women and child she has entered the world of literature after retiring from a current service she has she has involved herself in writing prose and poetry by now and contributed to more than anthologies and written about 200 poems she has received a lifetime achievement awards from an international poetry forum by the name of the significant early i proudly welcome dr vinita narula on my show what went right hello ma'am how are you thank you very well bhavi how are you i'm good too ma'am thank you very much welcome to my show what went right it's a pleasure it's a pleasure be thank it's you it's a pleasure of mine to have you here on my talk show ma'am so uh, your association with education system is quite long how old is your relation with education uh, uh what was the thought in your mind when you opted it as a career uh bharati i think there's a huge differentiation between education and literacy education starts as a person is born as i was born into an illustrious educated enlightened family where my paternal grandfather that is dada ji was a postmaster in koeta his brother was working for a civil engineering company in africa my maternal grandfather nana ji was working in the army in burma my mama ji was a medical doctor my father joined the army in burma after getting married so they were the people who actually initiated the education program in my life my father was a gold medalist scout in the british era naturally he was disciplined as an individual and valued that characteristic he also was a recipient of certificates of 100% attendance right through his school and college so as a child growing up these two virtues of being disciplined of character building started at home being truthful being respectful being obedient not throw tantrums were the features which were character building as far as discipline is concerned punctuality to be on time to wake up properly were a part of my living of bringing up so that automatically played a role 
the parents ensured that they got books parag chanda mama manohar kahaniya champak books from the national book trust etc which all had a moral ending and these were read on a day to day basis which impacted the personality which impacted the thought process which impacted the possibilities and believe you me these were not books that were bought they were bought from the paper wala on a returnable basis or they were bought from the mobile libraries or they were bought on rent from the shops that dealt with these books and magazines you will be knowing about those but definitely they had something that would go as a teaching so that teaching went inadvertently slowly regularly with love with affection and with sensitivity and after that of course as age progresses one gets into the school like we got into one also all siblings where i'll put that more as literacy that is learning the three r's reading writing and arithmetic which forms a basis of school education however what values are put and are circumvented in the four walls of the house are then extended over to learn the tricks of the trade between the children between the relationship of the teacher and the child between the prayers between the games between the quarrels between making your point is you know accepted or rejected so that is what school does and then going further to the college where one is introduced to the national level issues to the bigger you know things required at different levels so i would say education as a process started very early and trust me it goes on even till today because today i feel i am learning from my young grandchildren i am technically challenged we have never used all this technology i think i told you that that for little things i need to go to them whether they are 10 years or 12 years or 22 years i have to constantly ask them as to how do i go about it so education per se never ends that is if the human being is keen on learning so that's my take on education so thanks to my parents who gave us that value system to be learning all through to be accommodating all through these kids are very reluctant to make any strategy or uh, what what do you say about it we do not want to follow any strategy so they have their own mindset so how parents should cope up with the situation uh i don't agree with you that they don't have strategy i think they have strategy but with so many options available they are not in a position to decipher they are not in a position to give a direction in fact i don't think uh we as adults are also in that space where we can tell them as to what they should actually be doing because they know more than us in many areas so what i feel is like what i said about my parents and my lineage of grandparents and uncles and aunts they gave us a direction to be good human beings to be goal oriented but they never spelled out as what goal should we have where should we reach that was our so i think if we have been able to give them the right values they find the direction we should have faith and leave them alone to some extent but if we find faults with them we must nudge them we must correct them but 
with a soft hand which is understood by them they must understand that parents are meaning good and i don't think any child is averse to listening to the parents they may not accept it you know on your face but actually they take what we give to them so i think we should leave them ma'am you played an integral role so what's your take on the present education system being an educationist what do you have to say about it do you really think so that uh, the education system must improve the indian education system must improve i uh, won't want to talk of it politically at all because with each government change the thinking changes ideology changes and their way to go about also changes and it is up to them but what i know is as to what the purpose of education is to me in my wisdom since such few people get educated with formal education it is a duty of any student irrespective of the discipline that one is undertaking to get a hands on experience to have the practical element in any syllabus for example if physics we take it as a science subject a student must learn to change the bulb for example or to be able to see what is not right in the electric iron or the electric heater that we are using they are using at home or if chemistry is being taught its application in terms of detergents in terms of cleansers in terms of the acid reacting with metal should be etched to shine it actually should be seen by them beyond the formulae beyond the theorems which of course are important but they should go beyond the equations similarly if one is privileged enough to be educated in reading and writing to extend our hand to the lesser fortunate community members be they be as your maid as your dhobi as your car cleaner i think that is what education is and it must reach all strata of society rural urban resettlement colonies all locales tribal it must be a part of any academic syllabus to give that possibility of extension to reap the maximum benefit of education i say so because the state actually is spending so much for any student whether for a ba program or a medical doctor or an engineer and the fees is not enough that is being you know paid by the student since the state is taking so much of that on themselves i think it becomes a duty of anybody getting education wherever to take it further one of your book was published by the prestigious uh, publishing house orient blacks during the course of my discussion with you i came to know that uh, the book sold so well that the publishing uh, publishing house uh, had an annual party for it so please share that joyful moment with viewers as well yes that's true and that joyful not moment joyful years wow. because because they did it year after year after year 
Wow. Actually, uh, this book was published in 1986, and we are into 2020. You can see the number of years that have gone past. It has also uh, been the fourth edition now, and it's been printed, reprinted innumerable times. This book was actually done for our students to be used as a manual, and it consists of more than five hundred recipes. It consists of all important chapters, instructions, precautions to be taken by making those recipes of that particular chapter, and the best is. that is this inclusive of the nutritive value of each and every recipe with the result anybody who is using it and wants or requires to modify it in terms of nutritive terms they can easily do it for example for a diabetic you know if one wants to make it less a sugar or for an obese if one wants to make it less of fat or for heart patient if one wants to reduce the salt etc sodium etc it is possible so this book became so popular that what we had done for the students a house which got one book bought 12 books and it became a very popular gifting item at marriages and other functions and it still does it still you know so many of our colleagues while going abroad they carry a copy of this book to present to whoever so that's the story and two books that were really celebrated by the orient long men then because black swan is a new name were one this one basic food preparation a complete manual by us and the second is the english textbook that is taught in the schools both these books broke all records of marketing so they had a yearly party for the books i don't think it is true of it today because i see it from the royalty that i received that it is not selling as many books for whatever reasons that is it respected but it is done wonderfully well and it has done a lot of service to the population at large in india and abroad so that's about the annual parties i really congratulate you for this and may i ask you what made you to write that book uh you know our students have a very heavy curriculum home science is termed as probably a simple subject but it's a very very strenuous subject with six specializations that students deal with it's it's breaking point for the students before the book as we used to teach the recipes etc in the subject food science and food and nutrition they had to write all the recipes in what we used to call them as recipe cards they were thick cards and you know with rules lines and they were put in a box which we used to call as a black box it was specially made for holding of those recipe cards but as the syllabus increased and the recipe card writing became more and more difficult it was considered proper for us to give them a easy way out and get the published material and then is the transformation of teaching as a subject and learning as a subject so that is how we came about to write them well, that was in fact a great idea uh teachers and education system play major role in a uh, child's growth but even parents are equally responsible for a child's growth so 
what do you say about it what is your point of view on that i mean agreement i think parents have an extremely important role to play because after all we are making a human being we are turning a child into a good human being and good human being is actually all inclusive it is what value systems that they carry what character building is done for them how do we tune their bodies appropriately after all school will give them the formal 3 hours reading writing and arithmetic of course they go beyond they also help in you know building personalities in fact what i said about our own building of personality as a child similarly for all children what they have learned in the household they start to understand and utilize that in a wider atmosphere with their peers with their teachers with society at large while traveling in a public transport they start using all that but the initiation was done at home the seed was put in the soil at home it needed to be nurtured it needs to be nurtured by proper water sunshine and the rest which is added on at the school level however it is basically first point of interaction for the child which is a family the home so the role of parents does not stop at that it is on a continuum because the child is also continuously growing from age 6 to 7 to 8 to 9 to 10 from an adolescent turning into an adult etc is happening which the parents are seeing and after all in a classroom the teacher is handling 30 to 40 students at home one is handling two or three children or one child or whatever the time of the opportunity of spending time the opportunity of closeness is so much more at home so the parents have a tremendous role to play even on an individual basis education system will give what is needed for the society for example when the child goes out from the school into the college the child's approach directs towards the nation building not that it doesn't start at the school level now even school children are very well you know empowered today they are very knowledgeable they are introduced they are made aware but then this takes over further at the college space still the child would require the inputs from the parents and i think it must carry on so education formal and education at home are two parts of the same coin which need to be dealt with accordingly with love and care on a day to day basis on an occasional basis the parent has to see what stage of happiness the child is in psychological emotional what is the corona doing to the children today what are online education systems doing to the child today are they able to cope up or are they in the depressive mood the parents can judge so much better than the teachers so i think the parents role is equal to the teachers it's only that the direction or intimacy shifts a little let's uh, ma'am 40% of the children are not nourished properly so how can we combat the situation like we only talk about academic parts or we just want to nour- uh, nourish them academically 
so if i talk about their uh, like 40% as per the indian data 40 46% of children are not nourished properly so how how we can combat with the situation i agree with you there is a lot of nourishment <coughs> i want to further add also that a lot of state run programs are state is taking a lot of care in this direction there's a world's widest spread program by the name of icds that is integrated child development services running in our country in each and every district and has tried to reach each geographical area to the smallest place also even tribes and it is done through functionaries known as anganwadi workers and ashas now by through these there is nutrition supplementation happening there is health and hygiene inputs being given there is care about the reproductive health pregnant women are being taken care of adolescents have been added children between 1 to 6 years are there there is regular estimation gauging by the anthropometric measures of height gain body mass etc and food is given that is being done vaccination you know most of the vaccinations are free today in the urban uh, higher schools there is a midday meal program which is sponsored by the states a bit of which also comes from the center so a lot is happening what i would say is a lot of nutrition education is being given maybe that can be extended and run more vigorously we at the college level do a lot of extension work community work in terms of this going to the villages and various places we do it all the time but maybe like more and more ads are coming on the television and the other mass media fora usage of iodized salt or clean drinking water or washing hands that is no corona or usage of sanitary towels today are all inputs which are going in this direction however we are such a large population i would definitely admit that it is not a very bright story and we have a lot to go through it. and i'm sure we will at our own family levels we can take owners of looking after our close associates a car cleaner you know a person who cleans the house like i said earlier maybe a washerman an iron man if we can give our inputs for example if i ever have i seen somebody looking pale anemic i bring it to the notice have their blood tested and if possible also give them a few iron tablets and then tell them what the iron resources are and it works it works so each one of us also can take that onus in our small you know levels thank you very much ma'am now it's time for me to talk about literature so let me take an opportunity to congratulate you for the lifetime Emmy achievement award which you have received from international poetry forum the significant leak so when did you establish yourself as a writer from uh, uh you have initiated your career as a educator and uh, afterwards you moved uh, in, into writing so how do you portray your distinctiveness two things being in the education field involves 
a lot of writing in any case planning your lesson plans you know referencing putting them in order report writing being on the committees writing letters to the delhi university doing examination papers you know attending conferences and presenting papers there writing is always there i mean to read and write is a bread and butter of a teacher so that made you Writing a writer the, that made you sorry? a writer that made you a writer uh if you are meaning writer uh in the literary sense of what i am doing today mm-hmm. uh that came after i retired basically because while one is working especially in some place like lady urban college oh god it really takes a lot out of you you know yourself family extended family social happenings looking after the elders so many other related functions at the college here organizing biennials i was a home science association of india delhi chapter i am a avid lika member lika is a lady of in college alumni association member you know had organized the platinum jubilee for lady of in college that is the 75th year etc what i'm trying to say is one is so engrossed that one doesn't have time for an extra curricular activity like writing with a single mindedness actually i started writing in this fashion also uh, after my husband's death he died in a car accident along with two other people occupants of the car so sorry. i was the only that's okay uh, anyway i was a fourth occupant and it was really tragic it took my heart and soul away for quite some time and i decided to write a book i began also and i write a couple of pages but bharati uh, writing those pages was so draining emotionally that i couldn't go at a stretch and also i didn't have the time to go at it as a continuum it would break so it automatically for these two reasons broke but those things happen in you which you want to pen down after i retired uh my academic journey has not stopped i still even today work for igno that is the indira gandhi open university and for about 6 7 years after retiring also i was taking both theory and practical classes for school of open learning you know as ex students for ex students but then there came a time when i wanted to stop that and go into a bit more of poetry and prose writing to express my discontinued journey of writing a book because i couldn't do it i had failed in doing that so i began in writing bits and parts as smaller pieces both in prose and poetry and by now i have already contributed to about 15 anthologies 10 was long time back I received one day before yesterday and tomorrow my other anthology is coming in which I have contributed. So this has given me an opportunity to take my inner feelings out and also to enter another arena where your mind is involved is given is uh finding new words it's giving a direction to your own thought process so it is basically started after retiring and you will be happy to note that 
yesterday i received a certificate which i have already put on my facebook page where i had participated in a poetry marathon for the full month in which a prompt was given every single day which needed to be researched thought about penned so in that 30 days month actually i had written 31 poems because one was inaugural so that gives you a very great high plus you feel important you feel uh having achieved something you get a lot of respect your children love your involvement so writing has become a second kind of a profession for me and i'm adoring it i'm loving it truly an achievement ma'am i really congrats one more time i really want uh, to congratulate you for all your achievements thank you so much your allied with learning literature what uh, revisions you contemplate in your call for no in my vision i am not going to talk of syllabus because for different areas of uh, branches of education subjects there will be different uh, you know syllabi and experts will be able to talk of that experts in any relevant area will be able to give better inputs than a generalized education system revision in my wisdom any theoretical portion of any subject even if it is english or maths or any subject must have an application attachment meaning any student must 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 be made to go to the field must be made to make an impact on the fellow beings who have not been that fortunate whatever strategy is used whether it is through nukkad nataks whether it is projects which are specially specially made like each one teach one or it is legal literacy and many many others i mean uh, one can list them as thousands the basic thing is that each and every subject must have its outreach program how and why let the specialists do it uh please share your connection with the ministry of women and child development in regard to poshan abhiyan uh this project which is sponsored by bill gates under the uh, ages uh, uh under the ages program so you have what exactly you want to share about uh, with us like what 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 is your role in this project how you are associated with this project uh very beautiful question and short and sweet you have made it but i'll elaborate first i'll give you a talk on this this project which is known as poshan abhiyan has been taken up by the ministry of women and child development under the aegis of government of india and this project is sponsored by bill gates and is also being looked after by the harvard school of public health under this program they are developing an app known as the portion app as a part of this portion app they have something known as a nutri meter which will be able to gauge the consumption of different nutrients by the citizenry at large for which they have asked for my permission to use the basic for food preparation 
fourth addition in the calculation of the nutritive value to be used in this nutri app and i am extremely extremely satisfied and consider myself fortunate to be able to be of service to our nation of course it brings laurels to me but it is for this usage that this huge work would be put used to i felt the same when i with another person did a project for ncw that is national commission of women and we did a project on the case studies of war widows you know from the war widows of the services army people and when we did that and we gave our recommendations the ncw turned it into a book and they called it life after death and bharati then the ncw requested me and the co-author the co-project person to develop the syllabi for the complete country's scenic boards we did that and the program of releasing these was held in vigyan bhavan where the chief of the army staff the adjutant general of the army mohini giri and the rest of the country representatives were there that time also it was a huge feeling of achievement with this government of india requirement and request i am again once on a big high one has done so much work but one when the work gets recognized and is used by the country at that scale you know the color goes higher one feels a few more feathers in the cap so that is how this program is there journey towards success is never uncomplicated but yes it is similar for everybody so how do you comprehend your success story couple of things hmm? my upbringing yes character building utmost discipline wow. disciplined habits <laughs> i am <laughs> and today a staunch believer in discipline to me 6 o'clock means 6 o'clock it doesn't mean 1 to 6 <laughs> i think that is my you know story that i want to emphasize again and again nevertheless having a firm conviction in the almighty so that goes as per the indian philosophy of thought that whatever happens happens for a reason we must do our best to alleviate if it is an opposite situation if it is a bad situation we must try our best to get over it and naturally reap the result that we want to reach however if just if they are not reached to understand truthfully from the soul and so less indeed that this is what the super power wanted it to be like i'm not saying as a defeated soldier but as a firm believer that this is the best i can and then i have to leave the rest only when we take that attitude do we 
keep our positivity do we keep our possibility of strategizing do we think of possible ways in which we can transform but if it is bound to be whatever it is then we have to leave it and take it and move on we can't fight we can't cry we can't become negative we can't let i am not meaning to say that we become complacent and let things go the way they are going no we must fight to reach where we want whether right or wrong i don't know that is one's own desire and destination and thought process aspiration must try to the very very last and the best but beyond that leave the rest don't become a wreck don't become a defeated again i'll say soldier maintain the poise and let go you just said that we should believe in god we should believe in supreme power i hear i need to ask you one thing nowadays young generation they don't believe in god they have a very rational approach towards life so what do you say about this we need to imbibe this culture in them forcefully or uh, how we can deal with that uh see the way i see it i have gra- five grandchildren the eldest is 22 the youngest is 8 uh four boys and one girl they are all technologically so advanced and so savvy that they feel that they can achieve whatever they want to because they feel the world is in their palm they google it and they know it we had to struggle to get books we had to struggle to read them we had to struggle to make notes we had to you know that was a long process but we gained through that process because we went over a particular topic repeatedly solidly today the feel kya hai we can do it now it is not the parents and the family beings that is good that they have that confidence but that is not all that they want and need they they should want and they should need they need much more that is why we see today how many younger people are getting into depression how many are trying to end their life committing suicide how many of them are getting on the wrong path of we shouldn't actually be talking but we have to talk on the path of drugs on the path of alcoholism on the path of smoking cigarettes and the rest whether they can afford it or they can't afford it they have to steal it or they have to beg whatever they are getting in all these negative things why because the grinding of understanding of the true ideological aspects has not become a part of their personality it is for us how we do it it will change it will shift it will be different from person to person family to family method to method system to system however the basic is that it should be done slowly continuously with a lot of sensitivity trust and if i may add by setting your own examples i am not 100% sure that even all this will be able to give a positive result but then that is the way number 2 what is really becoming in fashion today is to get counseling done there are clinical psychologists there are many other people who were not you know that well accepted in society they were tabooed if somebody came to know that a person has gone to the psychologist it was taken as a negative thing in the personality development but not today i know of people who have their scheduled meetings with the psychologists 
and counselors on a month to month basis and it's not shameful so all kinds of aspects creating an atmosphere in the house where the city of value i know when we were small we used to have havan our mother used to do havan every single day on friday there used to be a satsang mahila satsang at home but those times are gone you know children are not even trying to bow down to deities because they feel that they can achieve things because they are technologically savvy but it is for us to give the shift how we do each one will need to think as per their own circumstance Thank you much ma'am very wonderfully you have answered my question i really appreciate that thank you very much what do you pleasure from being an educator or a writer <laughs> you enjoyed both so both my writing is also on education my writing is also life uh, experiences my poems are also related to education yes. whatever i see as coming i write on that oh. you know birthdays i am now giving gifts as written poems and my family uh, members in laws are loving it because no material a uh, gift can do what that does because even to write a poem you have to really delve into their personality their likes dislikes so i look at the occasion and education can never go out of an educationist wow. you know that tell it always comes towards education only you know people write so much on beautiful birds and flowers and the rainbows and you know all that they can fantasize they can use metaphors to me uh it is more factual it is more relatable it is less abstract it is more definitive i say what i want to say tuck which is always education you know recently we had uh, founders day programs for two of our departments and uh, i wrote a poem for both each one of them uh, i i don't mind reading a poem that i had written for one of them if you will permit and please, please, please go ma please go ahead uh, you can ask more questions after that yes, but sir. let please me please. read this poem please go ahead ma that i have uh, uh, written and i think you will understand what i am trying to say Sure, man. Uh, you know, let me take it out. I do it on my uh, phone. So take your time. I think I'll read this. Yes, please go ahead, ma'am. This I had done for a department mm -hmm. known as Development, Communication, and Extension, and I wrote it on. Uh, uh, let me look at the date. All my poems are dated. on 29th of september and i read it there the title of the poem is in potter's hands having gotten the best most suitable mud at hand having judged with penetrating piercing eyes with clear objectives in mind right from ug classes criteria considerations many attributes attitude temperament compassion wisdom basically feeling right situations varied from simple to complex family neighborhood and community at large having to modify and large skill set abundant not slight demonstrations 
group discussions exhibitions melas nukkad nataks well all strategized projects dissertations offering deeper insights to excel in getting optimum results insight to enable a better world and color our nation bright rural semi urban urban irrespective hills mountains plains deserts hot sands everything and all that one could lay on hands sense the needs planned and performed the deeds the potters on the same wheels turned tilted shifted speed slow or high tried and showed it responded as per demands the result is here for us all to see the very beautiful hues some in geneva usa canada germany france or the netherlands making us immensely proud setting examples for the next ones in life in line making each one to cheer for you and wishing you all to climb many more heights giving the potters many more smiles vinita narula 29 september you know this was an occasion this was an occasion when the department had invited mm-hmm. its alumna mm-hmm. from all these different countries oh. they are at the high designations and they were all invited so i wrote it for them basically as to what we did to them and what they can do to the next people in line so this is the tenor of my writings so how do we get not, how do you get these words like amazing words <laughs> uh, I think experience, you know, having written so much in life, having attended so much, having seen so much, having handled so much, you know. So, and God's amazing work, it's you know God's gift. It's God's doing. My next question is ma'am what message do you want to give to students irrespective of their branch of education to the medium of what went right Oh actually i must say you're doing a good job because usually people say what went wrong <laughs> so in saying what went right you're um, making it positive as it is i have jotted down these few i thought it's better for me to read them than to be memorized and these are a couple of messages which i think will be good 2 4 6 7 seven messages i've written yes. be good human beings hard working honest truthful i have already discussed all this that one has received it in life so they have been the major building blocks for me i am sure it will be for the others the second is remember to be a giver give 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 whether material or otherwise it is not that i have to remove my my sari to give to someone but if i can which is going to help someone i must give whether it is thought it is advice whatever be a giver the third i find very very important is to empathize to be able to empathize with people around you you can't do 
going out in the open and say well i empathize with you but must empathize persons who are in your contact whether they are dependent not dependent they are in trouble they are in a happy state we must they are successful not successful we must empathize with them the next i have said is reach out become a medium to alleviate misery if i come to know that a person is in difficulty in a situation which could be a misery let me find ways of reaching out of putting a hand at the back and say i am with you not that i can really alleviate what the person is going through because no two people are the same but to put a hand at the back and say i am with you makes a lot of difference the next which i think is very important is be positive and remember that any change takes time for the expected outcome if i say that i'll change that person's life it can't happen i can't change a, a child from whatever i think overnight it's a slow and steady process and we must be patient but positive next which i find very very important is be participate rather than be advisory you know to tell the person do this do this do this do this why haven't you done this it is better to be holding the hand taking their you know problem thinking of a way of extending whatever you can you know the last and very important think big don't think small you know don't think that i want this uh, this plant or i want this planter think bigger plan different it is not the dumb thing if we follow the same path ek line lagi hui hai plants kharidne ke liye you may not plan different maybe there is another time there is another situation there is another opportunity there is another nursery there is whatever and carry on on a day to day basis continue with it every day you know and do it different because all of us are different we don't have to dress up the same we are beautiful as one self we don't have to go by fashion per se we can be different and beautiful and economical and reconstructing the old material reusing the old material mixing and matching so be different knowing what our basis is what our possibilities are i'm really very happy to say that my parents didn't have too much money at home because bauji after coming from burma got into a government job he had only 60 rupees as his salary and yet we were so happy as children we never had to hear a no from them because our stomachs were always so full we were so well fed we had very few clothes but we felt really complete in those few clothes so one doesn't have to be coping wanting desiring fighting no be content be good be happy you know naya phone aata hai now apple 12 has come people are running to get apple 12 why not because their apple 6 is not working but because apple 12 has come they must get it so that is a rat race which we have to 
people are not actually Cut looking it. for meat people are not actually looking for meat they are running after greed absolutely true you are you are absolutely correct so this contentment is very very basic live a simple life live a rich life is the motto that's needed beautiful answer ma each and every answer was so amazing I truly admire all the answers thank you very much ma'am for sharing your incredible journey with us thanks a lot i have i myself learned a lot from you i truly admire everything we just said every answer is incredible answer i truly admire that thank you so much thank you ma'am pleasure being there thank you. all the best for your efforts thank you ma'am bye bye thank you thanks a lot ma'am bye